Perivale is the smallest town within the London Borough of Ealing. It forms part of the UB6 postcode in Travel Zone 4 and has a 10 mile proximity from Charing Cross. Up until 1900, Perivale exceeded no more than 60 residents, sharing 633 acres between them. That 60 doubled in 1921, and 30 years later, 10,000 civilians had moved in. The district of Perivale has about 2,020 Polish residents, the most concentrated amount of Polish in the city. The second most spoken language is also Polish within this district. Overall, 62% of households own their own home. The Domesday Book of 1086 described what was then simply known to be Little Greenford as an orchard of apples. Yet when the medieval French name Perivelle came along in 1508, the first half of it, Perry, meant pear tree. Back then, Perivelle was spelt with the letters E and I substituted with the letter Y. In any event, it's safe to say that apples and or pears and at least one valley were involved in its initial identity. In 1904, a station on this site opened as Perivale Hall on the Great Western Railway line. It was superseded by the current Perivale London Underground station in 1947. It took two different architects to design and eventually get it built since the entirety of World War II interrupted its construction process. A planned tower and extended wing were never constructed, so Perivale station is smaller than it should have been. It's one of only 16 tube stations that are Grade II listed buildings. This tiny 12th century church, St Mary's, is made out of flint and ragstone, with its tower clad in white, horizontally overlapping clapboard, an unusual style in this part of the world, more common in New Zealand and certain North American towns. It became redundant in 1972, but has since been transformed into a fine classical music venue, hosting mostly free piano performances in its cosy little acoustic space, seating an intimate audience of 70. Perivale established itself as a prominent area for crop farming from the 14th century, producing mainly high quality wheat. Once the 19th century came along, Perivale was the place to go for the growing of grass. This literally fueled industrialization in London, as Perivale kept the 50,000 horses fed with its harvested hay, transported conveniently via the Paddington branch of the now Grand Union Canal. This Art Deco design building by Wallace Gilbert and Partners, the Hoover Building, opened in 1933 as the UK headquarters for the Hoover Company, producing vacuum cleaners. To accommodate increasing demand for these devices, which essentially just became known as Hoovers, the factory was extended with two extra storeys to make up a working area of 254,000 square feet. Shortly afterwards, a canteen and recreation centre were added and the structure was dubbed a modern palace of industry, becoming somewhat of a museum as the firm welcomed visitors to look around it. 
It was considered a model factory for worker welfare since 1600 staff were employed there in its heyday. The architects justified the cost with the notion that colourful decoration has a positive psychological effect on the worker. It has now been converted into flats and the Tesco supermarket. Horsingdon Hill Park is the largest single nature reserve site within the Ealing Borough at 100 hectares, half the size of Monaco, and features wetland, ancient woodland habitat, hedgerows and meadows. The hill summit has impressive views and at 84 metres above sea level, it's the highest point in Ealing. Within the grounds there are plenty of activities available for young children, most notably the Gruffalo Trail, which features well sculptured characters from the classic children's books. They can print off an exciting map from the website to guide them around the woods, seeking out where the monsters are. The 37-mile Grand Union Canal is the UK's longest, linking London to Birmingham through the bustling city's industrial towns, peaceful villages and rolling countryside. 166 locks control it along its path. Its current form came into being in 1929 from the amalgamation of a few different canals, in this case the Paddington Arm of 1801. The conjoined canal is almost entirely towpath, suitable for walkers, dogs, cyclists and fishermen. It has a confluence with the River Thames at Brentford Lock in West London and another with the River Brent in Hanwell. A person moving at the average walking speed continuously would take 74 hours to walk the length of it, a full weekend and a bank holiday. <laughs> 